So now what, folks? What can we do with all this? I'm going to keep it simple. I have a white paper on it. If you choose to get it, it's on the website. You can download it. Uh, but some highlights from that. So for the leaders in the room, and I hope all of you see yourselves as leaders, being sincere. That's it. And the red flag, again, is you know, culture is not a one-off initiative. Some, let's hire somebody to come to a morale event. It, it's not happy hour. It's not a set of posters. It's the following kind of enablers. So intellectually, the leader needs to ask. Because if you're not going to ask, you're not going to hear, most likely. And listen and respond, not react, but respond. Emotionally, and this is a big area for a lot of us, we've got to work on that emotional quotient, is be involved, be vulnerable, be humble. So really be out there, regardless of how busy you are and how many clients you have to be in front of. Be with your people. Intuitively, trust. Trust doesn't happen by talking about it. It happens by modeling it. It happens by trusting first your employees, and then hopefully they'll see that, oh, it's safe. I can't tell you how often I hear in little breakout rooms with sessions with corporations I work with, in a team of three or four, you know, I'm actually not that passionate about this product. But don't, you know, can I share that with, with the bigger group? Nope, sorry, can't. I'm okay with my little team and them knowing, but don't tell my manager and people. How can they expect trust when you're holding back and putting that wall up? Be responsible and fail and iterate. Boy, that big, that's a big one, isn't it? We hate failing. We hate looking stupid. Got to do it. That's what Seth Godin was saying. Start it. Make it happen. Test it. Do it again. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Um, another video I love is Michael Jordan. There's a Nike ad, right, about how he failed over and over and over again. Doesn't just happen like that, even for the greatest. They try and they iterate and they keep doing it. Second, and this is mostly for employees but also for leaders, truly assess your culture. So, I mean, these are the sort of things that you can do with your, with your team and your people. And by the way, for those of you who are solopreneurs and really small, please hear all of this as being things you can do to engage your customer. Imagine if you started doing these things with your customer and saying, hey, let me help you get to these issues if you're working with a company that has more than two, three people. It can be done. It doesn't have to be large. So intellectually, the enablers are, are the basics covered? Let's just get that off the table, remember, right? Is the pay good? Is the benefits good? Workplace good? If they're crabby and cranky about that, I come across that often, do something about it. Um, company direction. Are you being visible about it? I can't tell you how often I speak to very senior leaders at large corporations and ask them, so what's your vision, even for this year? And they're like, I can only think three months ahead. Wow, that's scary. If a leader cannot share, know firstly her or his vision and then share it, scary place. Communicate it. Communicate it and communicate it. Um, trust the leaders. So intuitively, you know, they have, they have, you have to feel like they have, their, have you back so I can fail and they'll catch me. Respect the leaders. That again comes with modeling it. Aligning with the mission. And then emotionally, living your purpose. So firstly, are you clear about your own purpose before you can connect with that brand? Learning and growing. Zappos, again, they have lots of efforts to allow their employees to do personal growth, which doesn't have to do directly with their role or their business. They have a library in their, in their foyer, in their lobby, with tons of books from great leaders and you know, the thought leaders on growth. Freedom to fail, I've talked about that, that they're passionate and positive. And positive notice deliberately is last. I think that happens automatically when you're doing autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So a model in the white paper I lay out um, is around this, you know, connecting with the disengaged and engagement of employees. Um, I believe that we're really living in an age where the biggest thing about social media is it's an opportunity for employees, all employees, to be ambassadors, ideally, right? But notice it's a pyramid. We know the reality is not everyone's going to be willing to do that, even if they have the passion. Um, I love an example I heard recently where, you know, one person's the front face for Twitter, 
And when that person goes on vacation and somebody fills in, the biggest honor for that person who fills in is that they get feedback that they kept the same flow of that heartfelt relationship with the community. Wow. Wow. Does that make that person who went on vacation indispensable? Sort of, but not really. The whole point of creating ambassadors is that you pay it forward, that you build a culture where everybody, or at least a good set of people, are really doing it over and over and living it. And it doesn't have to be by role. So you don't have to be in marketing or PR or the social group to do it. You can be in any part of the company and be doing those things. So we're short on time. I want to leave some time for Q&A. Um, but what I'd say is advocates are good to have. Oh, here, yeah, I define them, right? So I define ambassadors because I'd like you to leave with at least one definition. The others are in the white paper. So intellectually, they live the brand tenants with personal confidence and connection. Right? They can tell their story. We talk about telling stories and how important that is. If you don't have a story that's really personal and almost makes a person cry or really laugh or smile, might as well forget it. That's the first telling sign that, you know, you really don't have juice around what you're selling or what you're about. Emotionally, spontaneously recite yeah, the personal stories. That's the emotional one. But the intellectual, I mean, they're hand in hand. You can't, you know, you can't separate them. Intuitively, proactively suggest new ideas and pilot them rapidly and often. So if you, even if it's a survey of one, I'm a market researcher by trade. You know, we look for big numbers to understand a pattern and what's going on in a marketplace. There's no harm in doing it with a few people and trying it out. And that's the beauty of social media and technology these days. It doesn't take much to test stuff. You can do it quickly, learn, and move on. So Zappos, um, I'm going to skip this because I'm at 10 minutes and I want to open it to Q&A. But this is what I was talking about, some examples. If you, I encourage you to go to Zappos-service and see the kind of tweets that are happening there. Talked about Busby, great story of how Michelle, the founder, was at that point of crisis, of shutting down the company around 2008. She brought in organizational change experts, great people like Hannah, who's here today, is a director with her. And you know, they, what they said was, let's hear from the bottom. Let's hear what the people really have to say. And Michelle had to step back. And she had to take the tough pill and hear the bad news. And then the good news is today, they're an extremely thriving, energetic group of about 25 people that really connect with what they do. 101% you, I'm going to actually run through real quick. So to cement how to think about, I've been talking about get clear about your purpose. I've defined this 101% concept. We all only have 24 hours. Decide what you put in that 24 hours. And then there's the extra 1%, that magic surprise that inspiration from a friend that comes, or comes through you, but isn't necessarily off you. You see something, you go, oh my gosh, what if? It could be that way, and you improve something. This is true of personal branding, and it's true of a company's brand. People can live by that premise of 101. So small group of thoughtful people could change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that's ever, ever been, is Margaret Mead's famous quote. So it started with, um, one there, and here's one from Margaret. So what's next? Really very quickly, our main purpose with Resident Insights is really that we're about inspiring people to be their best. And we do it with a hard look. We don't do it with a soft edge at all. We do three things. We do strategy, research, and people like Dan mentioned. There's a flyer you've received. And my final request is we have um, three short questions at our booth. Um, what, are you pas what, what passion drives you to do what you do best besides making money? What three things made, you, uh, made your favorite job fun? And what one thing besides money motivates you to give your very best to your work? We would love it if you'd stop by the booth and share your perspective on those three questions and be video recorded, if you're OK with that, at your choice. Um, and that's it, folks. So let's, I think we have at least five minutes for questions. Yeah, six minutes for questions. Anyone with questions? Come on, the first person. I can keep telling stories otherwise. Thank you, Diana. The, a mic up there? Can you, can you go up? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. 
my question is, is um, being in HR, I understand a lot of what you're saying. I'm sure people do here. But as you go into companies and sell this chief inspiration person, sometimes do you get uh, pushback? And how do you overcome that? Do you get companies that say, we don't, we don't need this, but you know and a lot of people know that they do. So how do yeah. you deal with pushback? Great question. Um, I start with this talk. I start with these numbers because that, that's almost, it's not sometimes, it's almost always. We live in a world that still believes that, you know, if it isn't about directly selling a product and clearly showing the line to the revenue, there is no ROI in it. And um, th this track of thinking is definitely getting attention. Is it getting enough attention? Uh, no. No, I mean, like I said, even Dan Pink, who's out there around the world, 365 days a year, is struggling with exactly this issue. So that's a great question. And that's why, I mean, that's the biggest thing I'm excited about. If you guys even take one thing out of this and incorporate it into your daily life, that's it. I've just got my ROI. I don't even need to hear about it. I'd love to hear about it. But, you know, if you go do that, that's it. You're living it. A great example right outside, uh, one of the... Washington Convention Center employees was standing at the escalator and happened to talk to me, overheard me about my business. Um, actually, I was talking about Jessica to Amin. And she said, you know, my husband and I, my husband's a visionary, creator business, and I was really nervous to do it. And, and basically, very quickly, in two minutes, she told me her story. And she absolutely related autonomy, purpose, mastery, right there. You know, the details don't matter. And it, all it takes is to find that story within a client, be it directly with the leader that you're talking to or somebody in the group. So my job is really to ask those questions, to get to that nugget, where they've already experienced it and know that it's proven. And that would be my advice to you if you're struggling with that in your team, with your leaders in management, is how do I show you know, the benefits of doing this? That's it, That's, it's as simple as that. And, and that lovely quote of just believe, believe that it's possible to change, because it is changing. Who's next? Thanks, Diane, following your lead. Hi, I'm Ryan, Bobby's partner in our practice. Um, and I want to actually respond a little bit to that as well, uh, Diane, because I feel like in larger organizations, it is a bit more difficult to get people to believe in this philosophy. They have been using what Seth Godin uh, speaks to, um, this older philosophy yeah. that um, has been used over and over again for generations to show success. So um, a key component that I think is great with everyone here is that you are small or solo or medium-sized businesses. Bobby's totally right and start living this way now. Those are the people that you will attract to your business and the people you will have attract to work for you. Um, just like Bobby speaking to Jessica, who's at our booth right now, he's also attracted a whole internship of individuals um, who are just like Jessica, in my opinion. And those are the kind of things that Bobby attracts, and those are the kind of people you want to do business with. Um, that will happen over and over and over again if you really live your culture and you really live your brand and what you believe in. But I'm going to tell you that it's not easy. Um, and it's something that you have to show over and over again and have a lot of integrity in to be able to do it well. Um, so. To, uh, to ask my question to you, actually, Bobby, and, yeah, and hopefully yeah, I, yeah, we I have hope that two answered your question. Before Barry well, is, me if, off. if I am a small or medium-sized type of business and I believe in this philosophy, what are some things that I can do to get involved or tuned in to this culture and brand pieces that you're talking about? Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Um, really, you've got to wake up with it in the morning and go to bed with it at night. You've got to live it, folks. I'm not even asking you to call Ryan or me. I would love to hear from you, but seriously, it's about your starting, your passion. You're getting clear about what you really want to create. What's that difference that you're making with the business that you do that's going to change the world? Because it is happening. The question is, are you part of it or not? And we just help find that nugget for people. I mean, I, I have. Scores of people who come to me and go, I really don't know why I do what I do. Well, let's talk about it. So thank you very much. Yeah. Really an honor.